What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Stranded Deep in which I, Splattercat, will start over because the most recent patch actually killed our save game. So there it is. The funny thing about that though is that even though the patch killed our save game, we still had all of our status effects, so we had no items and we had no base, but our health was still bad and we were still bleeding. And so basically it starts you off in the middle of the ocean on an island bleeding with none of the stuff that you had before. So technically you can load your old save, it's probably just not going to work out very well for you. Let's go ahead and beach ourselves in this island right here. This island kind of sucks, so we're probably not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Actually, no, it's got a de Oh, no, never mind. I lied. I'm sorry, island. I never should have talked bad about you. I'm so, so very, very sorry, island baby. Please forgive me. Please forgive me, baby island. All right, let's go see if we can find anything in some of these wrecks. Sometimes there'll be little toolboxes and things. This big flat area right here, oh my god, this is like building utopia right here. Okay, so this is our island. This is it. We're not going anywhere. I like this island right here. Good. We got it on the first try because I sat down to try and record this before, but I glitched into a boat on accident and then drowned. And it was just kind of like one episode, then I glitched into a boat, and then I died five minutes in. And so I was like, all right, well, maybe I just won't put this up on the internet because it's just me, like, finding a bug that is, like, essentially ended up being fatal. They need to fix a lot of the boats. Like, seriously, a lot of the boat models, like the wreck models, have, like, little things you can get stuck inside of and then just, like, drown to death. Does drowning start at death, so do you have to dr do you have to die in order for the drowning to count? Or is drowning just the act of, like, not swimming very well? Because in that case, I've seen a lot of, like, four-year-olds at the public swimming pool that are technically drowning. But they seem to be doing okay. I got my knife, right? Let's get this yucca. That's gonna be the other problem that you have on a lot of these islands. So, in the most recent patch, what did they do? Well, they added humpback whales. The sharks are a lot more aggressive now. Like, way more aggressive, as in, like, gimme yo shit type of aggressive. It's basically prison rules out and in here. They got rid of the bug that caused your boat to despawn when you sail across the ocean, so that's pretty good. That means that if I save my game and we decide to come back and play later, I don't have to worry about losing my stuff. So that's always of benefit to me. I enjoy that as a feature. And then, in addition, they made it so that, I don't know, I think they changed the spawn rate of Yucca so that it's a little bit less. I can't prove that, but it feels like there's less Yucca from playing the game a couple hours. They improved the amount of rocks, so there's a ton of rocks now. You shouldn't have quite as many problems finding rocks anymore, which is good because rocks were a serious issue in the previous version. I'm actually going to make myself an axe right now. I shouldn't, but I'm going to. So there it is. Make ourselves an axe so I have to carry around this like little pocket knife with me because it's not quite as good. And I'll leave the lighter here as well, just in case. Just in case. You never know how much you're going to have to loot or how much you're going to have to carry. So in this first episode, the places that I'd like to start, probably jumping up on some of these wrecks around our island and just seeing what kind of man-made items we have that will assist us in our long-term survival. It's the first thing that I always like to jump into, just because it's fun. It's exploration. I, th I don't think anybody like really hates exploration in games. Exploration is always one of those like optional things anyways that like, you can do it if you want, or you can just go follow the storyline. Since we have no storyline. Oh good, there's a Great White out there. That'll be fun. That'll be enjoyable later on. Better watch yourself, Great White. I got myself an axe, which is the natural enemy. The proverbial rock to your scissors. So just be aware that a bashing is coming. It's not, it's almost, it's not even an axe except in the most liberal sense of the word. Essentially, it's just like a really wedgy rock that I put on a stick and, you know, it functions kinda. It functions kinda. Let's see here. What they used to use back in the old days... I learned this in one of my, was it archaeology or did I learn this in my anthropology class? I learned about flake tools for a while and I sat down for a bit trying to make a flake tool and wow, that shit is a pain in the ass. If you don't know what a flake tool is, essentially a flake tool is where you take a rock and then you take another rock or a sharper, harder rock and you just skip it lightly across the surface of the first rock until it starts to be in the shape of a blade. And that's how a lot of cultures back in the day would start out in order to make their tools. They're called flake tools. There's some nicer stuff too. They got better and better at it as time went along. That's for sure. When you start to look at some of the earlier stuff that we crafted in anthropology classes and anthropology textbooks, and then you just move forward like maybe 3,000 years. Like it's still prehistory. Like these are still basically cavemen. They still get a lot better at it. Within a couple thousand years, they start making fish hooks that look really, really good. In fact, the fish hooks look fantastic. The ones that I saw that were made out of, like, random fish bone and things like that. They're really, really cool. And this is still prehistory. This is before there were, like, cultures and, like, Babylonians and things like that. It was just pretty impressive stuff. But, yeah, I tried to make a flake tool one time. The process was pretty flaky. And then I flaked out and quit after it didn't work for a couple hours. Eh, just sit there banging rocks against each other, hoping it works out. Maybe I'm dumber than prehistoric man. That's what I'm willing to bet that I am. I mean, I've been raised in a culture where I get to sit around all day on the internet and, like, read things on Reddit without actually ever having to apply any of the information that I have. So, you know, 
What comes from that is the fact that I'm probably a lot more useless than I let on. However, there's a boat right here with a compass. Oh, wow. Is that a new item? I don't think I've ever seen a compass before. That's kind of cool, though. That'll actually allow us to chart our headings fairly well. I'm thinking about getting graph paper out, actually, and making this work. If we have a compass, that's what geologists do. This is like making maps is what you are trained to do as a college-educated geologist. So, frankly, if I've got... Yeah, it's got degree marks and everything on it. Ooh. I'm not talking about, you know, like the armpit stains you get from degree deodorant when you wear it. Don't go down in here. Seriously, do not go down in here. This is the boat model that you get trapped in. This is the one that killed me. Don't go in there. You will regret it. You will regret it so much. If you're going to go in there, supply yourself with a way out. I think you might be okay if you could maybe wedge like a tree in there, possibly. You might be able to glitch back out. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of loot in there, but there's no way out. There's a console. There's a couple lockers, and there's a chest at the other end if you can get in there. But trying to get out is such a risky prospect that, frankly, I would just leave it alone. i just leave it alone. Just don't even go down in there. Just let it go. Don't even think about it. I, there's no way to get out through the bottom as far as I know. I walked around in there, believe me, before I lost my last save where I got trapped. Oh, there's something right here, too. Hey, now. A lighter. Why would you put a tiny little lighter in a giant hard case? It seems like a misallocation of your storage necessities. Oh, well. I like storage receptacles. One thing that I noted after I moved out of my parents' house when I was, like, a young adult was, like, how much you need storage space. It's weird how much you need storage space. Well, and we've got an island slightly, so north-northwest. Hmm... Yeah, a lot of interesting prospects right here. First and foremost, though, I'm going to try and get all the wrecks on the island, so let's go ahead. I think I see... Oh, it's a shark. I was going to say, I think I see Bubbles. Nope, that's a shark. Unless the shark's name is Bubbles, that is not <laughs> what we are looking for right here. Hopefully, we'll see a whale along the way, too. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I really like the whale model they added. The only thing I would change about it is that its eyes are textured onto it in a weird way, and so I would like to actually see eyes that follow you around because whales are smart like that, and they're curious. They're really, really curious about human beings a lot of the time, which led to them being hunted almost to extinction. Too easy to catch. Too easy to catch. They may be big and they might be brawny, but we're kind of very, very good at shooting projectiles. That's what it comes down to. Actually, I think this might be our only wreck, which is a big disappointment for me in all totality. I think that... Hmm. Yeah. I don't see any more bubbles out there. I don't see any more bubbles out there. We may have to go and, like, dive on another island. And that seems okay to me. I'm perfectly fine spending the first episode doing that. And then in between episodes, I'll chop down some trees. I'll get some wood ready to go. But I just want to have adventures with all of you while we're here. So I don't know if I should bring my compass with me. I mean, as long as we've got line of sight with the original island, I don't think we need it. I put it over here, right? Okay, I'm just trying to make sure. It's a pleasant azure blue color, too. I like that. It's relaxing. A red compass makes you feel panicked. Like, a lot of compasses, for example, are colored, like, bright orange. And they do that on purpose because, like, a Brunton can set you back a good thousand dollars if it's an expensive model. Same thing with a Freiburger. I prefer the Freiburger, by the way. These are different types of compasses, if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's special geological compasses that not only measure the you know, direction you're facing, but in addition, they also can measure the slope that you're standing on, they can measure the tilt of the rock, so the strike and dip. Striking and dipping is very, very important to geologists, like, that is what we do a lot of, measuring strikes and dips. If you don't know what a strike is, essentially it's the direction that the rock bed is traveling in or facing, and then the dip is the direction that it's dipping down into the earth and at what angle, and so, you need to know that. You definitely need to know the strike and the dip of, like, any rock to figure out how it, as a plane, is set into the field that you are currently taking part in. But this is more, like, advanced geological stuff. Most, actually, we started, my school was a field school, though, so it was a little bit different. My school is one of the last schools, I went to Sonoma State University, and it's one of the last ones in the country that actually has, like, a field system where every year you have to go out on surveys, otherwise you don't, like, move up to the next, like, you cannot become a junior without doing, like, field. You can't become a senior without doing junior field stuff. And so, we're one of the last ones. A lot of colleges have gotten rid of them because people, like, bring a lot of drugs and stuff like that with them out in the field, and they act stupid, and they party the whole time, destroy a whole bunch of shit, have somebody overdose. And so a lot of colleges have done away with field camp. My school was really, really strict about it. At least they tried to be. I mean, there was still a lot of, like, drug use and a lot of, like, random stuff on the trips, but... It wasn't quite as bad as one would expect. I'm gonna cut this out right here, and then we'll come back when we get to this other island. 
All right, so here we are, back on the job, back on the job. A couple of wrecks over here that are all looking really, really conducive to some long-term looting. This island, whereas our island seems to lack in wrecks and has a lot of supplies, just natural supplies, this location seems to lack in natural supplies, but also have a whole, 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 whole bunch of goodies that we can bring with us. I'm just going to beach this up right here as a reference point to go back to our island. And what you would want to do in this situation, so let's say that you're lost and you have a compass. This is a really good situation for you in terms of just navigation. A compass is a tremendous tool if you know how to use it. A dish- a flippers! What?! Since I can't see my feet, I don't know if those are going to be helpful. But let's find out. Are they? I can't tell if we actually have the flippers on right now. Do they just like naturally, or is it like a passive buff that you just get like, plus flippers and like super awesome font and then you just have it forever? I'm not exactly sure how this works, but either way we got stuff to loot. So let's hit this wreck over here. There's a number of wrecks that we have to hit before nightfall. There's one on this side, there's one on the other side. There's a lot of goodies around here that we do want to get knee deep in if we can help it. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to get below the deck right there. Is there a chest up here though? There is, if we can climb up here properly. So there's a case, it's got another lighter, I may leave that here, and I may, like, not bring it with me, just because it's not incredibly useful. Especially because we might find good things up in here. So we've got a bucket, antibiotics, so that's good in case we get sick, that'll be helpful. A propeller! Damn, that's badass, and a machete, okay, so we've got some goodies over here. This island paying back right now in spades already, and then we got an engine right there. So if we have a fuel tank, duct tape, an engine, a propeller... And a couple other things I think we can make this work. We're running out of daylight, which is unfortunate. Running out of daylight, but I think it'll be okay. I think we can make this work. I wish that you could get some kind of, like, aqua lamp. Other than the one, like, you can use the lamp that's already in the game to make this work. I may have to make multiple trips back out to this location before we can bring everything back with us. I like how there's, like, a sunward side of the island, and the other side of the island gets all shady if you don't come over here. So we're just gonna make a little pile over here by our boat of stuff to be considered for later. Got two lighters with us. We've got, I'm gonna keep the machete in case I get attacked. There's antibiotics. I wouldn't trust that those are still good. Just me personally. Now, antibiotics, when they go bad, they aren't gonna kill you. But they have kind of like a potency rating. They have like a half life or a shelf life that very, very quickly runs out. So you may or may not get as much use out of them as you think you will if you're sick on an island and you find some random antibiotics out in the middle of the ocean. Even if they're still sealed. Eh. I suppose the water should maintain an average temperature, which could be something considered to be refrigeration, or at least improvised refrigeration. But I don't think it would be enough. I'd still be a little skeptical. It probably wouldn't kill you if it took them. It's going to do, like, probably less harm than good, I think. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a pharmacologist. I couldn't really tell you with antibiotics. Uh, as far as I know, the antibiotics that I've had, they seem to go bad really, really quickly. Even the ones in pill form that seem like they'll last a while don't really... So anyways, just things to be aware of before you go popping pills in your mouth. Let's see over here. Sometimes this has a toolkit in it, like down in the brush in here. It can be hard to track down, but just be aware that this model occasionally, there's a tool, like a tool chest in here, and then sometimes there's a tool chest more towards the front. But it looks like we're lacking in light right now. We do have flippers, which is pretty badass. I'm excited about that. However, Wow, look at that view right there. That's gorgeous. I love the way this game looks. Like, really, I sincerely do. I hope this game has the follow-through and it does get completed. It's something that I'm I'm worried about. I mean, I have vouched for the game at this point by putting it on my channel and considering it to be a thing that I would call fun. And so it would be a little bit of a bummer if at this point, you know, it tanked. I'm not going to bring the lighters with me, I guess. I have room for them. But I think I'd rather bring a stack of rocks back with me if I can. I think it's a better plan for right now. However, this island is looking like it may have some of those basic things we need in order to survive. And so I'm going to I'm gonna pick it clean a little bit. I'm going to pick it clean of rocks, and then we'll head back out on our way because there's nothing to do at nighttime anyways. And so honestly, I may come back in just like a few minutes after we get our sunlight back, and we'll get started with some of those other things. Maybe I'll go through the night like chopping down trees or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We will definitely figure it out. Welcome back, everybody, for another, oh, I'd say probably like five, six, seven minutes of us diving around on wrecks. I took the time in between, like, the last cut and this one to just sort of, like, paddle in between islands and see if I could find locations that would be conducive to our long-term goal of finding as much man-made stuff as possible. I don't think I've ever seen that wreck before right there. That's a weird wreck. Hold on. I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put my ship or my little boat on the island right here. I gotta mark it with some sticks to make sure we can get home before I do anything else. Basically, I just went back to our main base. I dropped off a bunch of the stuff that we looted, and I came back out here. 
That's it. In the early game, this is what I prefer to do. Oh, that's not good. I think it's that island right there. I don't feel like I went that far. I think it's that one. Pretty sure it's that one. Either way, it's darkest before the dawn, and that much is true right now as we wait for things to happen. I saw that lockbox over here. I'll get it once the daylight comes. I can't. Well, there it is. Duct tape. Hey, there you go. What is the duct tape for? If you can't fix it with duct tape, you're not using enough. Yeah, that seems to be fairly true in my experience. Duct tape seems to be like one of those useful things that is just like always. Actually, never mind. We've seen that boat before. That's the normal boat that we always get. Let me. Is there a shark right there? What is that? No, I think that's just the front of the boat. I'm going to wait till the sun comes up slightly. Then we'll go out and probe that thing a little bit. There's another one right over there to the back right of it as well. Basically, do a little spin around the island right now. Do a little hokey pokey and see if we can find ourselves anything else while the sun is down. Because at night, it's actually easiest to spot bubbles just because of the contrast between the light bubbles and the dark ocean. So there's one back there, too. There might even be one right there, but I think that was a shark. I can't tell. I think it's a shark, though. Well, I mean, we can go take a look. See how it disappeared, though, once the sun came up? Very, very difficult to see some of these wrecks once the sun decides it no longer wants to participate in your plan of action. Since it's a little bit further out and I have flippers, I'm just going to keep my bearings set to where I last saw the bubbles. And hopefully we'll come across it shortly. If we don't, then we'll just head back to the island, but I know that I saw it over here, so it'll be okay. I say that a lot when I play this game. I'm like, I know I saw it. It's over there somewhere. But it actually is. Oh, this could be a deep sea dive too, though. That's problematic. Yeah. Well, it's out here, but I didn't realize we were going to be in deep ocean. That's a bit of a more concerning factor. I don't want a deep ocean dive while we don't have light. We're going to need a lantern or something if we want a deep ocean dive. There's a couple things you want to have when you go into deep wrecks. You want to have yourself an air canister, just so you don't have to come up for air every 10 seconds, so that you're not diving down to get one object. Come back up, breathe, dive back down, get one more object, like a pearl diver, basically. And then the other thing that you don't want to deal with is light, because it gets really, really dark down there. And believe me, I've had scares in this game. You've seen them, where it goes pitch black while I'm down inside a wreck, and then it's like, well, what do I do now? You know, and you got to wait for your lantern to come back on after you get done, like, spreading yellow clouds in the water. Hopefully sharks aren't attracted to human pee, because, honestly, that's a situation where I'd be like, my bladder has been loosed. Just, I'm letting it go. Its weight is too much to bear right now, underneath the brunt and onslaught of the terror, which is currently taking place. Sorry, just... Goodbye. Do you feel a warm spot? You should. You might not want to just let it go out with the tide. Let it go out. Let's go out to this boat and see what we can get from out here. I bet we'll find all kinds of goodies. There's a wreck right here. This one sometimes has a tool chest right in there, but there's none, so I'm not going to concern myself with it for right now. This is the big kahuna that I want to be after. This boat right here is more than likely going to have a couple of useful things that we're going to want. Got a cabinet with a water bottle. Good. Got a locker with another compass and an axe. The compass I don't technically need, so I'm going to leave it here for a second. A bucket full of seawater and a bucket full of seawater. Okay. Buckets are useful. I mean, don't don't let my relative like lack of excitement right now deter you from the fact that we are getting decent items right now. It's just in lieu of the even better items that we've been finding. You can leave some of them behind and not have to worry about it. Let's check the tool chest on the front. I was hoping another lighter. Yeah. Okay, so I'll probably definitely leave the lighter behind. We absolutely 100% don't need that. That's We've already got a couple of those, and they don't run out of durability as far as I know. Buckets full of seawater are interesting. The compass is interesting too, but I don't think we can jimmy rig it into anything else. Down here, I'd be careful. Sometimes you can bug through this wall, and then you'll get stuck inside the boat and die. It is what it is. It happens from time to time. However, I think I might appraise what we find in every wreck first. And then once we've done that, I'll decide what I want to bring back with me on this trip. For right now, I need to be on top of this right here so that I can see better. Come on. Get on top of the boat. Climbing leaves something to be desired in this game. Like, even with the ladder right in front of you, he doesn't appear to like using it a lot of the time. Okay, so in the morning, if you're trying to find wrecks, you need the high ground because you got to look down on them. That's the only way to increase the contrast in color between the wreck and the water. For right now, I thought there was another one. Like, right back here somewhere. There's a shark over there. Well, while we wait for the sun to get a little bit higher in the sky, 
we'll collect all this stuff and we'll stack it up next to our boat so that if we have to make multiple trips, we can and we can bring some of the goodies with us without having to worry about the fact that we wasted them. I'll go get the lighter too. Keep jumping. Just keep jumping. You got it. There it is. Another lighter. Let's take these back to shore. I like these flippers though. These flippers, I don't know if they make it faster for me to swim across the ocean than to use my boat. At this point, I think it might be way more efficient just to swim it. I'm not sure though. I'd have to test it out with a little timer and get the stopwatch out and go beep beep and let it happen. Drop all the goodies over here. A couple of buckets full of water. The water doesn't fall out of them, so don't worry about it. We'll throw that over. We'll throw that over. We'll throw this over as well. Not too bad of a haul for the wrecks that we've gotten so far. Things are looking really, really good for us right now. I think we might actually have a chance of building the boat. It's looking pretty good. What I think I might do is in between episodes, well... I'm going to wait it out for a couple minutes. I think there's still going to be a lot more wrecks that we can plumb over here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe in between episodes I'll fiddle with some stuff, but I haven't decided just yet. I may just wait for the sun to go up a bit further so that we can wreck dive a tad more efficiently. And then from there we'll head back to our original island, assuming that I've got the right one pegged. Bring this stuff with us. We haven't started any construction or done anything interesting yet, but I would like to have all the stuff gathered to do that by probably the third episode in this second little series, I suppose. I'm going to start stacking things up on the side of the island that I land on if we come from our island. And then that should be good. That should be pretty good. No wrecks in sight, but this was a pretty good episode. I'm happy you all decided to join me here. It's been fun playing Stranded Deep with you. I look forward to seeing you all in future episodes. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.